Welcome to the City Show. Pat on me, are you here? You there? I do this because you're there. I like to entertain you. I like to inform you. I like to educate you. Don't forget everything that's on the bottom of the screen there. YouTube, Facebook, uh, Vimeo, live stream, Instagram. We're on, you know what? We're on Spotify now. We're doing a podcast. I think I've been doing podcasts for a long time, but we're on the Spotify network and Apple TV. We'll incorporate them all. We just did the first one. We did, Actually, we just uploaded the city show. Um, e-bike regulations. Hoboken and Jersey City are moving forward with um, regulating the delivery service e-bike industry. And that's, you know, that's an Uber, uh, you know, DoorDash, anybody, all these places that deliver food, even, you know, the private ones, you know, the pizzerias and Chinese food restaurants. Just that the regulations that are being implemented by Hoboken and Jersey City, of course, are not the same. You would think we share a border. You know, Hoboken, Jersey City would say, listen, let's get together here and we'll, we'll enact these uh, regulations to um, try to get the e-bike industry to adhere to the rules of the road. Not so much the rules of the sidewalk, but that's where they seem to be jumping up onto all the time. I guess, yeah, you make it a delivery to an office building. I suppose you jump up on the sidewalk, you pull up by the door, you run up there. And, and I appreciate the e-bike industry, you know, they're, they're paid by the amount of delivery, so they're in a hurry, but they've been cutting people off, all that sort of thing. The problem is how we're regulating it. When you have two separate sets of regulations, possibly completely different, on a border city, yeah, 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 you, you got to communicate. But, you know, this is going to be a growing problem, uh, whether it's in Jersey City, whether it's in North Bergen, Hoboken, Weehawken. These e-bike deliveries, the Amazons of the world, they're here to stay. You know, when we were growing up, it was the pizza and Chinese food was the only thing we were getting delivered. You remember back in the order of pizza, would always put you 45 minutes. You'd be lucky it was 45 minutes. You ordered the blimpy, it would take like an hour and a half. And that's not the case anymore. This is pretty much you order it, DoorDash, Uber. And they're there pretty damn quick. It, it's an industry that's not going away, so it does have to be regulated. They should have registration numbers. They should have insurance. They should have the bright vest. They should have the flag on the bike so you can ID them. If Hoboken and Jersey City and the municipalities can't adopt the same rules and regulations, then the state's got to step in and just establish what the state bride uh, rules will be for the e-bike and the e-commerce delivery on said e-bikes. Um, instead of having a, I think Fulop referred to it one time as a willy nilly, uh, set of, um, regulations from city to city to city. All right. When we get back, what we're going to talk about the Jersey city board of ed has officially reached dysfunction. Uh, New Jersey transit, yeah, they put in a new tax and they went with the 15% fare increase. And we're going to talk about candidate for mayor, former governor, James McGreevy, and his concern about the lows there in Jersey city. You're watching the city show. I'll be right back. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Anna Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Anna Pinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. We're back. You're watching the City Show. Pat O'Neill, you're here. Remember everything you're seeing on the bottom of that screen. Hope you wrote it down. 
And we got to do it for like a QR code up there one of these days. Let's talk to the uh, the people, Garrett and John, that sort of thing. Jersey City Board of Education. It is never been a calm group. It's always had the antagonist and the controversy. But now we reach new heights. It is, it is, it is a dumpster fire. It is completely dysfunctional. There was like a coup that occurred at the last meeting for a new president, new vice president, new officers, even though they were told that, you know, this is probably an illegal vote. But they still went on and did it anyway. The, the infighting, the accusations, the calls to Trenton over, you know, whatever the problem is with another trustee, we've reached the point, it's the breaking point has been achieved. There is no functionality to this. They, they're truly dysfunctional now. And like I said, it was a coup this week. Yeah, I tell you, it, 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 it is so bad. Even the school's union, you know, Ron Greco, a guy, I, his father was my teacher when I was a kid. Uh, he, was, he was on the old weekly show when he ran for uh, council. He's been the BA for the union for years. He actually warned them that you know, you're opening up the door for the state to possibly walk in and take over again. I think the state has to. These, this group is dysfunctional. And, he, and really, the union's got a, a hand in this. They support and they funded these people. And yeah, you, you vet them. And you got to see some of these people. Maybe not. Maybe you shouldn't have them as a candidate. I think the state should. First, I think Mayor Phillips got to get off his butt and step in here. And I know it's a separate entity. It's elected. But Fulop can't sit there and allow this dysfunction, this dumpster fire to spread. You know, it's going to get into our schools. It's going to get into the students. It's going to get into the classrooms. This has to be stopped. And that's why we have Mayor Fulop. Now, he talked about an appointed board in the past. I'll tell you what, you ever wanted a friggin' reason for the appointed board? Look at this. This thing is dysfunctional. It's like I said earlier, it's a, it's a damn dumpster fire. What can the mayor do? I realize his hands are tight, but he's still the leader of our city. Um, yeah, he can withhold the money. He can withhold this, 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 this school's funding. It comes through the city of Jersey City. It comes through City Hall. He collects it. It's on your tax bill. You got three parts of your tax bill. Biggest part is your school. That's why your taxes just went up over the last year for the last two, three years. Um, it's your school budget. School budget's over a billion dollars. Yeah, that money goes through City Hall. Um, pull up should sit on it. Let them, let them take the city to court. That'll take years. Uh, yeah, withhold city services. You know, we, we, we do, do the garbage pickup for the schools. We, we, you know, Fulop is trying to work along with the schools as much as he can to try to shoulder some of the expense and, and it basically shared services between the Board of Education and the city of Jersey City in a way Fulop is trying to hold the taxes down, which is impossible with the Jersey City Board of Education. They have no concern about how much they can jack up the, uh, the, the, the school bite on the tax. He has to step in now. Fulop, Fulop has got to look at it and say, I, I have to do something. I can't let this dumpster fire continue. Uh, again, like I said, you want a reason for an appointed board? The chaos is the reason for an appointed board. Why we should do that? Full up in the state need to act in concert and put the heat on the Jersey City Board of Ed. I mean, Mayor Fulop has got to gather in his assembly people, his state senators, and go in there as a uh, force, uh, a force of elected people who are responsible to the people of Jersey City and the students of Jersey City. This can't continue any longer. Yeah, it was kind of laughable, some of the things they would do, but now it has gone behind. It's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for the city. It's embarrassing for the teachers. It's embarrassing for the students. There is nothing but embarrassment that comes out of these meetings now. It's, it's like those, those old Japanese meetings where they would take their shoes off and start fighting with each other. It's, yeah, we don't even see that on the city council. And we're getting in, well, actually, it's a silly season. It started pretty early now where we're in a, a campaign for mayor. So you got clicks out of beginning to form on a council. But at least the council operates in a professional manner. That's not happening here with the Board of Ed. Yes, if full up and our elected state representatives can't get the Board of Education uh, 
to act professionally. Actually, we should just go with the appointed board. These, the, all these people need to be removed. I, you, you just can't go in there and talk to them. They can't talk to themselves, so forget about talking to them. If Fulop and our elected leaders can't get the Board of Education to fund uh, the function, and I mean, I, I'm looking at a, a, an appointed board. I, 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 whatever the mayor can do has to be done before this affects our classrooms. Probably has already affected our classrooms. I want to remind you, these same dysfunctional individuals who comprise the Board of Education are responsible for a million-dollar-plus budget. They reach into your pocket constantly. They can't hold a meeting professionally. These are the same people that are administering your billion-dollar-plus budget. So if Fulop and our assembly people and our state senators can't make some sort of inway with this board, then yes, petition the state of New Jersey to step in again and take over the Jersey City school system because this has to stop. Every one of those people have to go. Simple as that. Yeah, you just can't point fingers at one or two of them. Just clean sweep this. It's it's the Jersey City version of New Jersey Transit up there. It, 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 it's responsible for a lot of money and it's, it's incompetent. It, it's actually worse. Here we got dysfunction. Like I said earlier, it's a dumpster fire. Mayor Fuller passed the act. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching The City Show. I'll be right back. I've got cancer. We've got the highest level of cancer care. The latest clinical trials. Researchers working to find a cure. And there's navigators to guide you every step of the way. At New Jersey's only NCI-designated Comprehensive Cancer Center, your safety has always been our top priority. I've got cancer, but I also have peace of mind. Jersey City Medical Center and Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Let's beat cancer together. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Pat O'Melia here, City Show. You there? Governor Murphy announced his budget last week. I think it's $53 billion for the state of New Jersey. It included uh, tax increases. Uh, he said he wasn't going to do that, but there they are. Uh, two things that really, there's a lot that stands out, but two things that stand out. One, uh, the commercial business tax, Sunset, it expired um, December of last year. That was a tax that was put on most of the businesses during the pandemic, temporary tax. But you know, Trenton, there ain't no such thing as a temporary tax. It's just more tax. Um, Mayor Fulop, who was running for governor, uh, one of his ideas was to uh, keep the commercial business tax to fund New Jersey Transit as a source of a, a dedicated source of funding for New Jersey Transit. You would think the fair is, but for some reason, the fair isn't a source of dedicated funding. Um, so the governor put a 3% tax, a uh, corporate business transit tax now, uh, same letters, just different, different words, um, on businesses that are doing a, a 10 million a year in revenue, I believe it is. And, um, that will generate about a billion dollars in taxes. Now, you know, these businesses that are getting hit with this billion dollars in taxes, you know where they're getting the billion from, these businesses? They're going to pass it on to the consumer. This is the kind of management that has us with $5 a dozen of egg, dozen eggs. You want to buy a dozen eggs? Five bucks. Uh, you know, the inflation is rapidly 
uh, increasing. We're, we're probably heading towards a recession. There's a reason why Biden won't be elected, as he'll get the blame for everything that's occurred. Uh, I don't know if it will be Trump. I would vote for a cat before I voted for Biden after everything we've seen over the last few years. But the main problem we have is it is too damn expensive. And in New Jersey, it is just the number one expensive state. We are number one in taxes. Uh, we just added another one, 3% there. So the company that we're putting this 3% commercial uh, corporate business transit tax on is just going to pass it on to the residents of New Jersey. In whatever way, whatever you're buying from these businesses, you're going to pay for it. Even if you don't use New Jersey transit or public transit, which is the only public transit we have now with New Jersey transit. Um, approximately 20%, I think less than 20%, of New Jersey residents regularly use public transit, New Jersey transit, just 20%. But yet we keep throwing good money at it. Pay some more money, throw some more money at it. Maybe it will change. That's a sign of insanity. We keep doing the same thing and thinking it's going to be a different result. No, not when it comes to New Jersey transit. But besides the 3% commercial business transit tax, Murphy okayed the 15%. A fare increase, which I'm fine with it. I don't use New Jersey Transit. If I did, I would pay what the fare is. That's how it works. The 15% increase, not enough. It's still going to be subsidized now with the commercial business tax, where it's subsidized now in New Jersey Transit by um, 74%. Before the 3% commercial business uh, transit tax, uh, and it will continue to be. It will just be more. It'll be with the with the three percent. I don't know, eighty five percent of it will be funded by people who don't use it, and everybody will pay. Um, and all that money, additional money, what will it do? It will do absolutely nothing. Bumpkiss. We will still have the worst transit system in the United States. The buses and trains will be late if they show up at all. The trains and buses will be in various states of disrepair. The only difference will be New Jersey Transit will have even a deeper ocean of taxpayer-funded red ink to swim in, do some backstrokes in. Money means nothing to New Jersey Transit. 80% of the population don't use it, but we're going to pay for it. The ridership is, is going to be upset over the fare hike, but they can be upset as they're waiting for the bus for an hour and hopes it comes. They will get on that bus and the seats will be ripped, the windows will be broken, the signage won't work, the electric digital signage. And I, I, I guess we could live with these increases if the state made some changes. First off, and I talked about the Board of Education needs to be replaced. It is the worst run transit system in the United States. It is recognized as such. Why are we keeping the same freaking people? You have to make some change. Stop digging in to our pockets. You have to make changes. You have an incompetent group running New Jersey Transit, but yet there's no heads rolling. There's no accountability. There's no denying how poorly this operation is run. But yet everybody's staying. They'll probably get raises because it's your money. It is so poorly run, yet nobody's terminated. How is that possible? How, how is that possible? Yeah, if Mayor Fuller becomes the governor, I will haunt the hell out of him to make personnel changes. You, you got to bring people in from the private industry. You can't keep running this thing. You Actually, you're floating it in an ocean of red ink. The incompetence is rewarded here. Nobody is looking for a new job. No one. But yet it is it is run, it's the worst run system. I, I, I just can't put it in a word. But again, like I said a week ago, we're going to throw good tax dollars after bad, badly spent tax dollars. Welcome to New Jersey. That's only in Jersey that this go on. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching The City Show. I'll be right back. Jersey City Medical Center has a passion for heart health. 
we're Hudson County's only full-service heart hospital with innovative technologies and premier cardiovascular physicians, a partnership with Rutgers Health, the latest technology and medical advancements, and nationally renowned care for every heart in every community. Whoever your heart beats for, our hearts beat for you. Jersey City Medical Center. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one pass stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you. Newport. Live like you want. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County. Because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. We're back, Pat O'Mill, you here? You there? You'd be paying for that for New Jersey Transit? Sad, it is so sad, it is so, so poorly running. Yeah, we're throwing more money at it. <laughs> Nobody's accountable. Jimmy Mack, James McGreevy, the former governor of New Jersey. Uh, he's running for mayor of Jersey City, and he's starting to take notice of some issues in Jersey City. I'm not sure who he's running against, if it's Bill O'Day or Mayor Fulop. I, you know, he keeps seems to attacking Mayor Fulop on uh, various projects throughout Jersey City. Last week it was Pompidou. This week it's the Lowe's Theater. He's very concerned about the cost of the renovations and the management and everything involved with the Lowe's Theater. I've been around with the Lowe's Theater for 20 years. There she is right there on the board. I have, I and the members of the FOL have gone through numerous administrations trying to get funding to renovate the Lowe's. Never happened. The FOL would have fundraisers, do what they can. But the real money, to make a difference, money never came. Jimmy Mack, Jim McGreevy, is concerned about the renovations cost. When all said and done, I believe the number is going to come in. This being reported at about $105 million. I believe it will come in at about $118 million. Now, a lot of that's being blamed on the COVID, the pandemic era. Everything is more expensive. Well, there's a reason for it's more expensive. We've got a lot of bad management in the United States. <laughs> that's why everything costs a lot more. Um, the Brooklyn Kings, the sister theater to the Landmark Lowe's on Journal Square, was renovated recently, and I think they came out about $140 million to renovate, and it's beautiful. Yeah, if you got a chance, go online, Google it, Brooklyn uh, Kings, and you'll see it. Magnificent building. It was in far, far worse shape than our building in Jersey City. Again, thankfully, the FOL uh, secured the building. And it didn't get, you know, uh, ravaged by uh, people looking for copper and wires. And they made sure the roof was sound and it didn't leak. And they cleaned it and they fixed it and they maintained it so the building didn't fall down like it happened in Brooklyn. Um, it shouldn't cost as much to renovate the FOL, the, uh, the Lowe's Theater here in Jersey City, thankfully, because of the FOL. Um, the final product, product, after all these renovations to the theater, probably won't be a theater as you and I know it, or as we know the Lowe's Theater. It'll be more of a concert hall. Concert hall. The Devils, the people who operate the Prudential Center, um, own the, the Devils and the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. The owner now owns the Washington Commanders. And they are managing the White Eagle Hall in Jersey City, and they're doing a good job with it. 
what will be in the theater will be um, basically a big mosh pit with a lot of bars. Um, the stage itself, until Mayor Fuller personally got involved, I don't think the theater would have had a functioning stage. It would have been okay for some bands, but as far as to put a play or, or the versatility the stage should have, that wasn't there. They weren't going to have enough lights and you know all the instruments and all the technology you need to run a stage. I believe Mayor Fulop saved that when we were talking about it. And said, you know, I said the, cent the stage is the center of the theater. That's why all the seats face that way. For that matter, you're going to have some really crappy seats that are going to be installed in there. They're going to level out the main floor. You know, it's an incline. So if people sit and you know, you're on an incline, you can see over someone's head. They're going to level that out. There's a lot of things I'm not agreeable on with the renovations, um, but I'm not the mayor. And the mayor has a vision for this theater. He's had it since he became the mayor of Jersey City. And his vision had one option because when we put out the bid, the city put out the bid for the Lowe's, we put it out during the height of the pandemic and we got really one response and that was the uh, devils. Um, so this is what we got. We're playing the cards we've been dealt. Um, the, the organ, that beautiful organ in there that is fully functional now, I don't know what the future of that is. Hopefully it stays there. Um, I don't think the group of the devils are particularly fond of the big organ there, but it's there. The question is, how available will the renovated theater be to the civic groups and organizations that would you know, put on shows and fundraisers there and we'd have graduations and whatever we were doing there over these years? I don't know if that theater is going to be welcoming or can be functional enough to accommodate them now. I believe the Lowe's Theater should be renovated the same as its sister theater in Brooklyn. Again, go to the Google of Brooklyn Kings and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, it should be a completely versatile theater to handle anything from a concert to a live play to uh, stage events, um, fundraisers, graduations, whatever we're doing in Jersey City. We shouldn't narrow the focus of the building. Um, the reason we're at this point is we didn't have any options. When he put that RFP out, right, uh, request for proposals, uh, it really only got one. It was during the height of the uh, pandemic. I don't believe all the contracts have been signed. Everything has been uh, T's crossed and I's dotted. Possibly there is an opportunity right now to uh, rebid this. Maybe we should do that. Um, frankly, if the city, the state, and the county are paying the bill for the, all the renovations, and as far as I can tell, they are, you know, the devils will pay some sort of a lease, uh, monthly payment rental on there, but I don't think they're going to come up with $118 million. And that's the case. Jersey City should be calling all the shots. We should be restoring this theater to a fully functional, capable theater of doing whatever we needed to do and still represent the people and the city of Jersey City. I, I give credit to the, the, the Devils. They've done a great job at the White Eagle Hall. They've been put on many concerts there. Thing is, do I really need another White Eagle Hall at the Lowe's Theater? I don't think so. But we'll see where we go from there. Um, but Jimmy Max concerns. Should have had those concerns quite a while. If he was uh, that concerned about Jersey City, should have said something last year. I did. Should have said something the year before. I did. All right. We're out of show. You'll be good. You'll be safe. I'll talk to you next week. Good night.